Mitch, I'm starting to question how much I eat in a day. What should I do to gauge amounts? Well, just like in the microbiome, there's a, there's a natural answer to that. And that is to always, you have to, you learn to recognize hunger and you learn to recognize satiety. It's not as simple as it sounds. Uh, how much do you eat? Well, the natural answer, the natural answer to that question is, and it sounds so simple, eat when you're hungry, stop eating when you're satisfied. Recognizing, recognizing those signs is where it gets tricky because those signs, in order for them to work correctly, have to mean that you haven't done so much damage to your physiology, especially the receptors for certain hormones that are not only in your fat cells, but in your brains, that you wouldn't recognize those signs if they smacked you in the face. A couple examples of what I'm talking about are insulin resistance, Ghrelin, which is the hormone that triggers hunger. Leptin triggers satiety. And of course, and of course, insulin, insulin resistance, which is the granddaddy of the cause of all of our problems. You don't have to know. You don't have to calculate it. You don't have to figure it out. All you need to do is just make sure you're eating enough fat. And the consistency of your stools is a built-in indicator, built-in gauge that tells you that. But if you're metabolically screwed up because of all those years where you're, you have insulin resistance, you have leptin resistance, and, and what, the, what that means is there's plenty of those hormones circulating. There's plenty of insulin circulating in the blood. The problem is that the receptors that recognize the presence of insulin on your cells and for one of a better analogy, get numb to the overload and ignore the signals. So no matter how much sugar's in your blood, your cells think there's not enough sugar. If you have leptin resistance, and there's something you don't hear about a lot, but it is one of the major causes of overeating, of people never feeling satisfied. The, lept the, 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 the receptors for leptin are in your brain. Leptin is produced by your fat cells. When your fat cells get full, they produce leptin. Hormones, and this is something that, it's a concept that you'd think everybody would know, but very few people think about it this way. Hormones serve one purpose in the body, and that is to signal a message to somewhere else in the body. It's incredibly elegant. Hormones are produced in certain places, so that they can be read by receptors in other places. Leptin is produced in the fat cells. And when the fat cells start producing leptin, they start producing it because they're full of fat. They have enough fat stored in that cell. And that hormone is then sent out into the bloodstream. It goes everywhere in the body, but it's targeted primarily for the receptors in the brain that recognize it. It's a telegram. Hormones are messengers. They're telegrams. They communicate the state of one area, one organ, one cell. They communicate it to a specific receptor designed to read it at the other end. If that hormone has been 
way too high for way too long, those receptors stop reading the messages. It's like having a mailbox and never going out and checking your mail. You don't know what was in those messages because you never looked at the mailbox. Meanwhile, the mailbox is just getting crammed fuller and fuller and fuller of mail, but you have no idea what it is. You may be audited by the IRS and not know it. You don't know. Well, when the brain develops leptin resistance, it cannot recognize that the fat cells are screaming, stop already, stop already. That's what satiety is. When, you're, when your leptin receptors are working perfectly in your brain, the minute it sees that hormone leptin, you stop eating naturally. That's how it happens in all the animals. You will stop eating. So there's two reasons why you may not be able to know how much food that you need to eat. If everything's working right and you don't have leptin resistance and leptin balances with ghrelin, which is the hormone that triggers hunger, if all that's working great, then just follow your body's clues. If you feel hungry, eat and keep eating until you feel satisfied. That's the the reason that I decided for myself that I will not ever snack. I will only eat full meals because that's the way we are supposed to do it. And that allows these hormones to work like they're supposed to and everything normalizes and you begin to actually recognize what real hunger is and separate it from the hunger that most people think they have, which is not hunger, but a craving for sugar, usually, usually triggered by some emotion, stress, or habit, and don't discount the habits. How many people go to a movie and don't just automatically buy a 55-gallon drum of popcorn? It's a habit. How many people can sit down in front of their TV at night and watch a movie without the habit? There's no hunger. They just finished dinner, but they're heading for the snacks because it's a habit. So you have to watch out for uh, things that are just a habit and things that are physiologically driven, like cravings, and learn learn to distinguish. But the, the key to all of this of knowing how much to eat is learning to recognize the natural signals you get from your body when to start eating, when to stop eating, and learn to recognize true hunger. Sometimes people mistake thirst for hunger. Sometimes if you think you're hungry, but you, you, you don't know why you shouldn't be hungry, you drink a big glass of water, your hunger will go away. It's all about learning to recognize the signals that you're getting and not try to interfere or do anything other than what those signals are, are demanding that you do. Now, that's what I did, and I settled into about two, two and a half pounds of food a day. It did, I didn't start out by measuring it or anything. I just finally learned. Over two years ago, I finally learned to recognize hunger and satiety. The habits went away, the habits of snacking, of, of eating a few bites of this and that between meals. That benefits your digestion. I learned when to stop eating when to stop eating. And if I ate my meal and the food in front of me, I did not feel that feeling of satiety. I ate more. I ate more. And I do that. Not very often, but I do that because I might have needed more food at that particular time than I thought I did, or I usually do. It happens to me sometimes. I will go and eat more until I get that feeling of I can't eat another bite. And you'll eat enough food. And it's something we all have to discover on our own. And that's a long answer. I hope that answers that question for you, Paul. I hope it does. I'm basing all of that on just my own experience. My own experience and the way I live right now. I have not eaten since 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. I am not even hungry yet. Not hungry. No thoughts of food. 
none whatsoever. I'll start to feel, based on my experience of the last two years, 11, 12 o'clock, I'll get that. I could eat feeling. And even if I didn't eat, I'd be okay. I wouldn't be famished. I haven't been famished or felt starving for over two years. And that is the true, that is the true <laughs> miracle of how this lifestyle returns your body back to the physiology and chemistry that it has worked perfectly for, for millions of years without us having to consciously intervene in anything, just following, just following our, our instincts, just following our instincts. Thank you.